What's the future looking like for Halo? Are we going to get some new modes? Are we getting some campaign DLC? Is there a battle royale? Well, I answer those questions and a lot more in this video. So stay tuned throughout the whole thing to understand on the details. Now with the current state of Halo, there are a lot of questions being asked. And so I thought I'd reach out to you guys and see if there are any questions you personally would like to have answered. And you guys replied a lot on this community thread here. If you guys want to catch these posts when they go live, all you gotta do is subscribe to the channel and you get to see them on your subscription feed. If you like these type of Q&A videos, make sure to tap that like button. Let's me know you want to see some more content like this and it greatly helps with the video and channel within that all famous YouTube algorithm. But Adelcott1 asks, thoughts on 343 Industries possibly stepping back into a publisher role and letting contractor studios like Cern and Affinity take over the actual game development? Well, it obviously looks like Xbox and 343 are doing a different approach when it comes to Halo development in the future cutting a lot of the art team, narrative team, and basically taking out the entire campaign team, well, things are going to be changing quite a bit here. Of course, we have this two-sentence statement from Pierre Hines, the head of 343 currently right now, saying that Halo's not going anywhere, which I would totally agree with that. I don't expect to see Halo go anywhere. Halo's here to stay, dude. And we've heard it from recently from Phil Spencer talking about how Halo and Xbox are basically intertwined together. And so Halo's always going to be created. But what is 343's role going to be when it comes to creating Halo? I believe we could see a very similar approach that we see right now with Activision how they do Call of Duty with the three main studio heads of Infinity War, Treyarch, and Sledgehammer along with supporting studios around those main games. Where those main studios are kind of like the idea guys and kind of lay the foundations of what needs to be created and then you have these external studios to help develop extra content and maintain the live service. For example, Infinity Ward are the guys who made Warzone, they made the map and everything else in between, but then you have Raven Studios there to maintain the Battle Royale, make some updates, help provide content and community feedback. And we've seen 343 do this already with games like the Master Chief Collection, where they didn't really have their hands too deep into creating the Master Chief Collection. They mainly helped make the UI for the game to be, have everything be connected. And they were the guys who were behind the idea of Master Chief Collection in the first place. But then they hired out various studios to help basically do the heavy lifting with companies like Cern Infinity making the multiplayer maps for H2A. Saber Interactive helped out with a lot of the porting. And I think we could see a similar process when it comes to Halo moving forward. Because I think it's become rather obvious that a game like Halo is just too big of a game for one studio to have main control over. Essentially, let's divide and conquer and create something really awesome, but this is going to be a multi-year process to see any kind of benefit of the division of work when it comes to creating Halo. JMO asks, what do you think will happen with Halo Infinite's life cycle if it continues to add on more game modes, more maps, and what would you like to see moving forward? And what would you like to see come back? I would say right now, everything for our end as users and players of Halo Infinite, for 2023, it's going to be business as usual, as most of the content has already been decided what's going to be created and what's going to be added in for these seasons, and now 343 just kind of has to create it. Personally, I don't really care much to see any kind of classic modes that we currently don't have in Halo Infinite right now return. I know the big thing is going to be flood and infection and stuff like that, which is going to be the leaked, rumored kind of stuff that we've been seeing, I've been reporting on the channel, likely coming in with Season 4 with the new game mode Extraction, but we'll see how those play out. When it comes to game modes, I personally would just like to see something completely different something new that we haven't really had in halo before we're focusing so much and just bringing back those old feels that we remember and love from halo like firefight infection maybe invasion or something like that but what i would like to see is something completely new that we've never had before in halo i think that would be way more exciting than playing some game mode that we played 10 years ago but now with modern day graphics which all signs seem to be pointing towards the battle royale which we'll actually be talking about later in this video but when it comes to the life cycle of halo infinite it's very much in, up in the air right now. I think that 10-year plan that was promised early on in Halo Infinite's development was uh, a bit of a stretch. And like what Chief said, The missions change. They always do. With no hope of campaign DLC coming anytime soon for Halo Infinite, I would be surprised if we see Halo Infinite get any actual support beyond June of 2024, as that's when the fiscal year rollover happens for Microsoft. That's when we'll know if Halo Infinite will continue on into the future. But right now, I don't really have high hopes of that happening. As I can see, seasonal support happening rip until that time frame. And then after that, 
I think it's going to be kind of quiet, and basically we'll just be waiting until a new Halo game experience to happen. But until then, I'm waiting for Microsoft and Halo Infinite and 343 to prove me wrong. The Vet Taylor asks, do you think we could expect any DLC during Infinite's lifetime? I'm assuming you refer to DLC as in story content. I think that is still going to happen a little bit. But that's mainly through seasonal storytelling, which we've covered previously on the channel. It seems like the leaks and rumors that were kind of going around is that Infinite was planning to do much more like truncated smaller stories that could be released like once a year kind of thing maybe like a little extra campaign story that'd be lasting maybe like two hours or something like that nothing too crazy like we got at launch obviously given the recent news of the campaign team essentially cut from halo infinite or gutted at least i think most of the storytelling we're going to see is going to be through the seasons of halo infinite now what's that going to entail Will they put more effort into the seasonal storytelling compared to what we had for season two, which is basically, hey, I'm a Spartan, you're a Spartan, I have armor, let's go play multiplayer. I think if we're going to see any kind of large scale campaign storytelling kind of stuff, it's going to be a brand new game. Because most of the campaign stuff that was getting worked on was more just kind of conceptual ideas, rough things that were kind of trying to be put together. Nothing really is substantial that was like, oh, we just completely missed out on a whole new story. It was more just kind of like the beginnings of a campaign story, which are incredibly difficult to craft and create. And to, according to Microsoft, not financially viable for the current state of the economy. So at the absolute earliest, I think we could see any kind of storytelling happening with Halo gameplay wise. Probably would be like 2025, and that's being very optimistic. Lyle Postal asks, while the multiplayer seems to be the main focus on account of the campaign most likely being scrapped, do you think Project Tatanka will be scrapped also? Short answer, no, because I think Tatanka is fully on track to be released early 2024. But heck, even with this campaign team essentially gutted, we could possibly see it moved up. I don't know, it's mainly dependent on certain affinity and their workflow. In a recent interview with IGN, Phil Spencer alluded to it, I would say, as saying like talking about rumored things coming for Halo Infinite, what's the biggest rumor that's been going on for the last year? Battle Royale. And since years have gone into this, and also 343's new focus since September of just putting the life service up to where it needs to be, and also it being a completely different team of certain affinity creating this mode, that I think everything is on track and ready to happen. Plus Tatanka, it has to be like the last home run shot possible to give any breath of life into Halo Infinite. And playing off of that Tatanka question, Parker Hoskins asks, what are your thoughts on a Halo Battle Royale? I've been saying this since the launch of Halo Infinite that I think a Battle Royale within Halo's sandbox and lore and everything else in between would actually be quite amazing. And I feel like 343 laid the foundation for a Battle Royale to happen because you think of various game mechanics, right? Say if you want to pick up the overshield or the camo in a battle royale, you wouldn't want to like touch it and have it be activated right away like it was previously. You would want to wait to use it at an opportune time like you can in the multiplayer. Making callouts in a battle royale is rather difficult because it's such a large scale map and being specific where people are can be hard to pinpoint where players are going to be located. Well, that's why a contextual ping system is very useful like there is in multiplayer. Long range weapons like a sniper rifle would be very problematic if there were hit scan like they've been traditionally in the last 10 years of Halo that you would need to make a projectile like it is in Halo Infinite right now. You would need a diverse sandbox that people pick up weapons that can gain power, but you probably have to do something a little bit more tasking to do it. Maybe like having those HVT enemies that you have within the campaign that if you kill those players, they drop new loot, more powerful weapons, just like you see within the campaign right now in Halo Infinite. Oh, and you probably want to have like a circle that will close in to keep the action going like you see right now with attrition. And you definitely need a large scale map with unique points of interest on there that you can probably find new loot and different engagements like you do right now in Halo Infinite's campaign. I'm just saying a lot of the groundwork has already been made to have a Halo Battle Royale. You just need to be able to make the game mode and have the infrastructure of servers to be able to host how many players you want on the map. Now, if you want to know about an Xbox survey that got leaked out to the public that actually questions the viability of Halo Infinite long-term, check out this video right here. Thank you much for watching. Catch you on the next one. Peace out.